Well, being 7 o'clock, I'd like to call to order the Town of Woodstock Board of Village Trustees <coughs> meeting on uh, June 11th, 2019. And I'd like to start uh, with citizens' comments, if there are any, to be heard. Hearing none, we will proceed. There are some additions from our posted agenda, and we'll get to them as we go along. So we're going to start with requests for permits. And uh, so the first one up would be uh, the class of uh, 2021, a bake sale June 15th <coughs> from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, occupying the green from that time period. Bake sale, breakfast items before the event, before the alumni parade. Um, is there anyone here representing that? They were supposed to be here. I don't see anything on here that would be worrisome. Uh, does does anyone else have a thought? That starts at seven. No? I think they're occupying like <coughs> so like to set up and everything, yeah. including cleanup time. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion to accept the um, uh, big sale as presented. Is second. Second. Carries a, a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed. The motion carries. Next up is the Porsche Club of America Auto Show, September 5th, 2019. Um, and is there anyone here to speak to that, which we had requested? That somebody show up. Because hmm. we need to speak to them about some of our concerns, such as weather, and weather. I, and did email her. I think we should just table it again. Did she? Yeah. Did she respond? To yeah, you? so she'd be here. Um, all same right. with all, same all three board. of these said that they would I have think to we table this one. Until right. Yeah. If she shows up, we'll get back to it. But for right now, we'll table it until next month. Would you, would you let her know that we're tabling it unless yep. she I comes sometime this <laughs> evening? Thank you, Beth. All right. Next, the Spectrum Teen Center, the John Langens uh, Road Race. Um, this is something that has happened many years for many many years um, and I'm comfortable enough with this because it has occurred in exactly the same way it's described for so many years that we can deal with this even if someone's not there I'll make a motion here. to accept it as proposed second all those in favor aye, aye. okay that motion carries uh, next up, we have a new one uh, regarding uh, River Street. No, is that? No, that's a traffic issue. Actually, use of the sidewalk, Bentleys, that's up next. And then we'll talk about River Street. Um, so, Bentleys Block. First of all, we do have a letter that's related to that. So, I'd like to read that to the public. This. Uh, Letter was sent on June 6th uh, by David Brown, a town resident. And he said, please be advised that on Saturday, May 11th of this year, while walking from Gillingham store to the Woodstock post office, I noticed half a red brick lying on the sidewalk on the Central Street side of the Bentley's building. I stopped and looked up at the side of the building, trying to see a place from which the brick had fallen. Among all the similar bricks on the facade of the building, I could not identify a specific mi missing brick but my assumption was that the other half of the brick was up there somewhere. <laughs> Since this event, I've often thought how fortunate I was about the timing of the event. Had I or some other pedestrian been passing by at the moment that brick had ejected itself, the result could have resulted in serious injury or death. Needless to say, every time I walk downtown now, I am sure to avoid walking near the Bentley building. The risk may be low, but the result would certainly be extreme. I'm urging the village trustees to take immediate action, action to protect the public from what could be a catastrophic event. Thank you for your attention to this matter, David Brown. So, um, in, a, in a joint meeting with the uh, select board, a new ordinance has been passed uh, involving uh, buildings that need rehabilitation, as well as uh, vacant buildings in both the town and the village. Um, and it's a town ordinance. Um, 
So we uh, are aware of the problem that that building and others might be presenting, and uh, so uh, some action in that direction has been taken. Fortunately, um, Bentley's is proposing, the owner of Bentley's is proposing some uh, rehabilitation of the exterior of the building from the top to the ground level. Mm -hmm. And he's proposing that the work be done in both, let's see, in August 5th to August 19th on the lower level between the hours, this doesn't say the hours on it, Beth. It's, it's 6 to 10 per the, um, the ordinance. 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. A.m. A.m. A.m., rather. Yeah, right. 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Uh, it's a busy time of year to be uh, having ladders and work on the sidewalk, but, you know, it usually doesn't get busy till after 10, and we all want to see that building rehabilitated. Yes. Um, the other time period is uh, from September 4th to 18th, the upper level. This will require a lift, but that's a less busy time period in those two weeks. So, um, again, the same time requirement, though, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Um, what, what do my fellow trustees think about this? The sooner the better. When, yeah, it makes summer. When is summer a taste of Woodstock again? Um, August 10th. Okay. Yeah, I mean, and that's on Elm Street again, anyway, so, so it really sorry. wouldn't be a. I'm sure that are they going to be working on the weekends as well? That's that's a good th question. This is that's not delineated in here, and I would propose that this work only be done Monday <coughs> through Friday. We set up from 7 a.m. on mm -hmm. that day. The fifth through the chamber. Closes Elm Street, etc. Mm -hmm. Joe? I'm, I'm curious, Jeff, you said that was a town ordinance. That, that, um, I have two questions. One, does it apply to the village as yes. well? It, it does. does. In this case, the ordinance, to make it simpler and comprehensive, I see. It's, uh, it's passed by the town, which includes the village. Oh, yeah. So we don't need a separate village ordinance. Okay. In this case, it just. Uh, Is there a specific part of that ordinance that applies to this building? No. Applies to any building that needs rehabilitation that or, is, or is vacant that, that poses a public safety risk <coughs> of some sort, and we will be appointing a, a, a public safety officer, uh, possibly David Green, um, to be the inspector for such. Thank you. I believe the ordin ordinance was changed to say town and village. It does say town, even and though village, it didn't need it, to, but, it is, but it lives we in the did. Town ordinances. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I would support that the that the work only be done Monday through Friday. Okay. Um, for I sure. just think it it's rough that nobody's here to speak to this, and we're not really getting any specifics. Although I am all for the Bentley's building being real rehabilitated, I just don't right. understand why it's nobody's just here the to talk to it. Time too, also to make I mean, sure that we are both on the August we are all on the same page of when this work can be done. Mm -hmm and when it can't be done. And it's not that there aren't people. I mean, people are around, walking around before 10 a.m. for sure. A lot of them. But I would Especially rather, during I, that time. I mean, you, I want it to get done. Just but I'd also rather our else. visitors see that action is being taken and that it's not just a village of crumbling buildings. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. Are there specific plans anywhere, like how far along they're going to be blocking off the sidewalk? Will this be incremental or will it be all at once? Will there be, will um, what's that signage? called? Scaffolding, scaffolding, scaffolding yeah. permanently there for no. that period of time. No, no. no. But no. We, that's the point. We just don't know. That's well, they well. only occupy from, according to your village ordinance, and Chief Bush can tell me if I'm wrong, but I believe according to your ordinance, it, they can only occupy from 6 to 10 a.m. that sidewalk space. So they can't leave scaffolding does, up. It, they can only occupy. Right, but does that mean that only work can be done during that time? But it doesn't say whether they can leave their scaffolding there if they need it. I think the scaffolding project isn't going to happen anyways until the, the September portion of the project when they, do they the work top up top. top. The and part. then that's probably between now and then, I guess you could get your questions addressed, but I don't have the answers to your specific questions. Yeah. And on I the, think um, 
planning and zoning also has questions on what they're doing. If it's just rehabbing the building, like fixing things, that's okay, but they're wondering if they're going to make any changes. Before. My understanding is they're just re rehabbing. I've spoken to Bob Crow about this, uh, and he said they're just rehabbing, which is what it says. Um, and based, if we use that word in our approval, and uh, if we if we uh, adhere to the ordinance, uh, we can be sure the sidewalk is cleared uh, after 10 a.m. We can enforce that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, I so I would I suggest that we allow <coughs> this to proceed and, and get that building in in a safer condition as soon as possible. Um, but. Uh, you know. So I would move that we approve the permit for rehabilitating the exterior from the 5th to the 19th of August and September 4th to 18th, excluding Saturdays and Sundays from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. With the sidewalks cleared. <coughs> With the sidewalks cleared by 10, by 10 a.m. Is, is there a second? I'll second that. Is there any other discussion on this? I would point out that um, permits have been granted in the past for this rehabilitation to take place and no work occurred during them. Mm -hmm. So we'll be lucky and, and hopeful and happy if, it, if uh, it actually does take place as described here. Any other discussion? Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, the motion carries. Well, why, um, why was no work being done even though they've been approved permits I mean, what was holding them up you would have to, have to ask them you have to ask uh, the owner of the building <laughs> we can't answer that okay uh, moving on we have the addition to the um, agenda here which I'm not familiar with but I see some folks here who might be addressing it um, about River Street traffic issues Sh shall we listen to that now, folks? Any yep. objection? Nope. Yes. Who's here to speak to us about I'll that? I'll kick it off. Okay. Uh, I was asked by some residents on River Street to add this to the agenda because of some of the concerns they've had with um, traffic issues on River Street, specifically some speed uh, speeding on that street. Um, and in the mean short term, uh, I put out the speed cart there, mm -hmm. and I've had the officers do some directed patrol on that street for radar enforcement, but I don't think that it's probably going to address the long-term issues that they may have. And so uh, Mrs. Raymond was the one who contacted me and her husband, and so I'll just turn Before it over. Before we turn it over, let me just ask you, Chief, what was the result of having that uh, out there? The speed cart? Yeah. I just put it out there today. Oh, today. So I don't okay. know yet. <laughs> okay. But the last time I did put it out, I, I think we had some positive results, but yeah um when the police are there everybody slows down if anybody's standing outside people slow down but the second no one is around it is like the indy 500 <laughs> and it's really dangerous and this is really where the tourists are coming everybody's been you know being told go across the cover bridge take a right and it's very pretty walk along the river but it's not safe people are blowing the stop signs especially in the morning at night but um, I think we need to do something because the animals are in danger and um, I, there's just a total disregard for a speed limit um, I, I don't know if this is you know just like everybody hits it when they get on our street but the streets crumbling on one end so we've got a lot of trucks on the street. We have huge volume since a lot of things have been re redirected over time onto the street to avoid other projects. So we have increased volume and we have speeding and people are annoyed if there are any cars parked. They, they say, oh, like I'll try to turn into my driveway and people will honk at me or they'll try to go around me on the left when I'm trying to turn into the driveway. So it's really hard and we're just here because we want some help in figuring out how to um, change it back because it's a neighborhood and you know we love where we live but it's becoming uh, like an outer belt and it's it's just like the wild wild west west of the river is you know like they don't think anybody's going to catch them so I don't know what we can do but we'd love some more stop signs um, more help you know with having um, Chief Bush come out um, speed bumps a no truck sign because you know that also that curve in the hill is very narrow and people pop their tires on it all the time, trying to go. It's a blind curve, but two trucks really can't pass there. 
um, upwards, you know, been fixed in that curve where the sidewalk is because if the sidewalk was extended. Um, because so, that over by the bridge. Yeah, like by Rockefeller. Okay. Um, <coughs> so we really would like a no truck sign. Um, we understand oil deliveries and that sort of thing would, would come through, but you know that's really something we need. Also, the other end would be very expensive to fix because we have so much traffic that it's collapsing into the river, and that's a knife edge there. So, you know, it's just a huge liability, and it's unsafe, and we're asking for your help. That road has a weight limit, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, and I think we, I'm trying to remember if we reduced the weight limit on that street, or maybe I'm thinking of High Street, <laughs> but we did increase the, si the size of the signs, notifying trucks of their weight limits, so that it would draw more attention to the, to the drivers. Um, it, it could help to put a sign up that says no through trucks as well I, I, as a tra traffic calming issue. Another traffic calming issue, um, I was just brainstorming, but was perhaps put a, uh, a three-way stop sign at the bottom of North Street. So as you come down or as you're going east or west, you'd have to come to a stop there. Stop signs are used as traffic calming in, on a lot of residential streets and because people have to stop, well, in theory, <laughs> they have to stop um, and then <coughs> pick up speed again. But before they pick up too much speed, they're at the next stop sign. So that was just something I, I thought might help mm -hmm. calm. Um, we talked about the speed humps, but the history of that street, as I understand it before my time, but was that the speed, there were speed humps put on River Street, but that some of the residents complained about the noise of the speed humps as like your lawn service trucks went over them, they created a lot of racket. Mm -hmm. But Jennifer really had a good idea yard, of right putting the speed humps perhaps right across from the cemetery. Not a lot of complainers <laughs> there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can definitely say that, you know, stop signs are probably a good idea, but although you might want to hear this, my son likes to go through the covered bridge on our way to Rainbow from the center of town. So we do cut through there. I drive extremely slow to the point. I think I told you that I actually probably annoy people. But it's very rare that I see people actually stop on that fully. I mean, it's the slightly tap on pedal. It's your California. Oh, yeah, California the roll, the roll through. They do not stop at that stop sign by the covered bridge. Very well at all going east and west over there. It's, it's actually quite and, and bad. We, we do sit there, and we, we do write tickets there um, on, on occasion. Right. But it's like, what, like she said, when we're there, nobody. <laughs> right, when, you, right, right, when you're there, they see you. I know we were there this morning, though, because it was quiet. Yeah. That's that the other issue. Speeding. <laughs> That's the other issue I wanted to bring up is the noise level on River Street. Um, and it's not just the large trucks that go through. Like this afternoon, I followed an oil delivery truck that had come, obviously, from Route 4 and was coming all the way down River Street rather than going through town. I mm -hmm. followed him all the way out to Route 12. So an oil delivery truck was using River Street as a bypass. Well, they do it a lot. And they do, they it, do it a it lot. All the time. It's not just the delivery trucks that are noisy, though. Pickup trucks today are created to make the most amount of noise that they possibly can. They've got open tailpipes. They go through River Street at 5.30 in the morning, 5 o'clock, 4.30, whenever. I'm hearing them because my windows are open. You hear them on Mountain Avenue. Your yes. windows are open. And they're blowing through the stop sign because obviously no one's there at 5 in the morning. But the noise level, and I believe we have a decibel level limit in this village. So if there's some way to enforce the noise level on River Street as well as over on the green, <coughs> that might be helpful as well. Um, it's, it's not just the big trucks that are going through that are making a lot of noise. It's your everyday pickup truck now that's been created to make the maximum amount of exhaust noise. And you hear it. You can't avoid it. It's all day long. And it, River Street has been used as a bypass for decades. And it's now gotten to the point where it's dangerous. It's not just people going by at 25 miles an hour. It's gotten dangerous now because the sidewalks are sort of disintegrating. And when Joanna and I walk in the mornings, 
it's almost impossible for two of us to walk on the sidewalk side by side, so one of us needs to be in the street, and there are people using River Street as a bypass at 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning, and they're going 25, 30 miles an hour. More than that. More than that. And, and so there's a point in this village where 25 miles an hour is actually too fast. Because but they you, don't you just can't go 25, stop they're fast going enough. 35, 40. Yeah, you can't stop fast enough going through this village at 25 miles an hour. You just can't. 25 so, is state mandated. I understand yeah. that. But they go. in the way, yeah. but in a neighborhood, could, but in a neighborhood, <laughs> they don't can you go not lower it to 20? They don't go can't, 25. Well, I was 40. saying that on my street, which you guys don't even have the issue I have, mine is a completely blind curve, and mm -hmm. we put the we put the rump the rumble things on on the street we did whatever we could and they still roar right around and our house is right like literally it's touching the road yeah. and i have little kids it's rough i i feel for you because i don't know what the right answer is to do it's a it's a town highway how can you really tell people that they can't use it to, I don't know what that answer is. Are there any other areas in the village where speed bumps have been implemented effectively? Speed bumps are a problem in the winter. Right. They have, so to, have to be lift them up. They have to be temporary. I, since I've been here, I don't think we've used speed bumps. We'll in my street, we did. Oh, that's right, the run like the yeah. Yeah. Didn't they didn't really it, do anything? They were actually, once they realized that they could fly over them, they just start driving <laughs> quickly but over them. they weren't the big hump, right? They were the run, they, they were the No, no, it was, it was a, Oh, a hump. Huh. Was it? Oh, yeah, and, and they, they go right over them like it's nothing. I, I would love to try it. I'm not saying you shouldn't. What if we try to, you know, a few things? Well, yeah, yeah. What if we, yeah. You know, what, if we, what if we tried the uh, no through trucks? No through yeah. trucks. That's a good start. Mm -hmm. I think that, that would make it. Does that mean pickup trucks, too? No. Mm -hmm. That means big trucks. Yeah, delivery and trucks. And so unless they're delivering the on that street. And limit. those exhausts that you I talk about are aftermarket exhausts. It's 16, and I don't know that we can They do it down Elm right Street, and they rev the engine I down Elm Street. I don't know. I'll find out. I thought it was 8 before, and then it was up just a minute. It was lower until they changed the curve to the right. Yeah, Joe. When they put the sidewalk in and made the street too small. Yeah, Joe. When they put the sidewalk in and made the street too uh, up by the Rockefeller area, that's when everything sure kind of fell apart yeah. because people were coming straight at you, coming. And I called Phil Swanson and said, "Could you please put the yellow line, paint line?" And first he said no, but then we did get the paint line at least to try to separate. Because everybody was coming down the middle of the road, mm -hmm. and then coming over the hill and you couldn't see them. There. Right. Yeah, there. Joe, do you have a? Well, <coughs> in my opinion, I, I really think the. It really comes down to enforcement. I, I, I really feel you can put up signs and bumps and all sorts of things, but what, it really, what really matters is enforcement. We have the same issue up on Linden Hill, or Lie High, as we like to call it. And it, it, when there's an officer up there, it dramatically changes everything. Well, for instance, if, if, we, put, uh, if we put in a no through truck thing, and, and put attention to enforcing it early on. Come, businesses tend to, if they, if, can you give a ticket if that sign is up? If there's an ordinance associated with it. I can, we can put any sign up we want, as but you know. Yeah, we'd have to pass You'd have ordinance. But I thought we will put up the sign for starters and then we can back, we can get the ordinance to back it up as soon as possible. Uh, but in, means, the meantime, in the meantime, we can give out, we can educate, <coughs> we can give out warnings, give out for, warnings. The, for the trucks at this point. Yeah. Um, I know on then, South Street the speed limit sign that does the blue lights is really, really effective. We really like that. that. We would love to have that. Every single time. And I we would love there. to have that. Um, that would be a great So, I mean, that maybe by the cemetery would be effective because the blue lights wouldn't really be yeah, bothering anybody. Yeah, the going to complain. I didn't move to Woodstock to have blue lights shining in my face on my street. I'm sorry, in Woodstock to have people speed by our I agree with you. I'm just saying that these are what the, the things that we get from people. We put one on Lincoln Street. And people complained about the blue lights, and we're like, well, if you see the blue lights, that meant you were speeding. Stop speeding. Isn't that true? Yeah, it's true. It's ridiculous. I really feel like this is an important issue to get solved within the next 12 months, because I know that Route 4 is going to be resurfaced at some point. And as soon as you block Route 4, River Street becomes a highway. So I really feel like this issue needs to get resolved before anything happens with repaving Route 4. 
I mean, we really need to do something because otherwise it's going to become unlivable on River Street when the paving happens on Route 4. I think having the blue flashing sign near the cemetery is a great That would be great. Yeah, two truck sign. Yeah. And the, Does that go both ways? So, the, uh, so the, the sign on, on uh, it, it would be have to. I'd have to purchase a, another permanent mounted sign for that. The blue lights on rivers. I put. I'll, I love the blue lights myself. It is against the the traffic or, uh, manual ordinance. And once in a while, I get a nasty gram from the state telling me you're not supposed to have blue lights on those. They work so well. Do they do well, it works. Work. But, uh, and bottom line is this, I can try to see if I can get some grant funding for a permanent mounted um, speed sign so that you don't have to worry about it out of the budget. <coughs> and if I can, the, uh, if I can find a place to plug, here's I, just a little aside, to, <laughs> to, hook up a, to hook up a sign uh, with the direct power is about $1,800. I've found that the solar powered signs, aren't, they just don't last, they don't hold up. Um, so, if I, I can purchase the sign, but it doesn't cover installation, so there is going to be an associated cost unless I can mount the sign somewhere where I can plug it into somebody's outside outlet. Hello. Hello. <laughs> okay, I have a question about River Street. So, coming from, if you're going headed east and you're coming from the rec center, there's sort of that. I call it a blind curve Terrible car. because of the parking on the street and you can't see if someone's coming no matter how slow you're going. I know parking is such a big issue in the village and I even hate to bring that up, but maybe eliminating a space or two there or limiting how often people can park there. Because I know for me, even going slow, I almost always crash into someone going around that corner because you can't see people coming towards you. I don't know where I'm where is that? Um, it's, the it's like almost right area. before you get to the Mount bridge. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, the rec center. Yeah. Coming, the rec center is over. Coming from the rec center, if you're on as you're approaching the the covered bridge, mm -hmm. when people park on the left hand side of the street, you can't see other people coming towards you as you're approaching. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, unless it's dark and they oh, have their yeah, lights that on. Oh yeah, that's like curve there in the road. That bend, right yeah. There. I think there are a lot of apartments right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the um, learning lab has classes at Nan Bourne's. Mm -hmm. that's that's right. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. And that takes a lot. I was just going to say to Robbie week. that the Rotary Club owns a box right by the cemetery that goes to the star. And that might be an opportunity for I'll you. To explore that. Yeah, to that's hook up. Okay. So why don't we do this starting? And then see more things need to be done. Why don't we start with a sign with no through truck traffic? I'll order one up. And also, if you could explore a grant for um, the permanent for the permanent uh, speed sign with, with the flashing blue lights. Mm -hmm. Couldn't Kurt? If I, were, if I were to purchase one, first thing I'd do is find the company I wanted to buy it from, and then go to the salesperson in that company and have them come and take a look at our problem and give us a solution. Well, I don't know what thing we can do. It's a public road. Um, other than I'm sure some we're of not these reinventing the wheel. Yeah. Everybody else in the no, village. No, we've staged them before. We've got four throughout the village. I, I think we I think we can figure out how to put up an electronic yeah. speed sign. Yeah. I think we could also ask our our residents to actually do you something that we do need to take the road drive a lot slower drive slow enough that you feel like you're driving slow no matter what it does to the people behind you forcing them to drive slower on that road thank you yeah thank you <laughs> so why don't we start with those two me measures uh chief so uh, much that'd be great so okay measures. thank you for bringing this to our attention well thank you for listening thank you for listening. appreciate it thank you the thing I do on Linden Hill is I will stand in the middle of the street and point my finger and take pictures of their license plate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've thought about many things. <laughs> I do it. Like we should morning. do that in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you there's one guy that comes in at 520 every morning. We might wake up like and it's a, like it's a radar <laughs> gun. <laughs> Slows people right down. Yeah. 
But yeah, we'd like it not to be Talladega. <laughs> um, Did you see the picture of the old woman holding the hair dryer? Exactly, that's what I just said. <laughs> just do that. They think it's a little <laughs> speed I was going to say, Robbie, you were talking about getting the bike out. Maybe you should bike yeah. out for a while. Nobody can see you. <laughs> or just Let's have some notes to come Right, exactly. Yeah. All right, There's so we have, a, we have a starting there. plan. Let's hope that it calms the traffic down yeah. for you. And we'll move forward with these two things to start Thank with. You. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's move on to uh, our police chief's report. So uh, we'll start off with the uh, meters um, for June, or excuse me, for May, we had $9,673 in revenue from the meters, which compared to uh, May of 2018 of $8,820, almost a $1,000 increase. And so also regarding the meters, um, I have talked with a company that is uh, a different revenue or credit card transaction processing company. Yeah. They can save us about half a cent per transaction, uh, which probably, which really comes out to um, about between a 17 to 20% savings on average. So for instance, in February was a 19% savings, it, but they did a comparison. Mm -hmm. In um, March it was a 20% and in April it was a 17%. Saving so right now we pay 5.5 cents per credit transaction credit card transaction every time somebody swipes a, a card and uh, This other company only charges uh, five cents Correct me if I'm wrong chief, but do we have to wait until our contract with them is up? No, because this is not a IPS. This is involving company called first data which is our company that we yeah, the we largest use. credit yeah, card but this is this company this other company is AMG um, they use first data but somehow they're able to they get it yeah. an extra bit I'm sure you know unfortunately these companies all charge way more than businesses are charged for the use of credit card yeah. processing yeah it's just kind of crazy I don't know why that is and does it but I would suggest Sorry. though Chief, uh, to be careful um, that there's no hidden, uh, that's truly apples to apples, yeah. that savings. Yeah. When I, I mean, right. in, in writing, I would get it in yeah. writing. Before we, yeah, before we do anything, it'll be, there'll be a written in black and white and we'll have it reviewed and make sure that yeah. there's no hidden language in there. And sometimes those savings only last you six months and then all of a sudden you start getting like the banged bait, by them yeah, later bait and on. Yeah, switch, so yeah, I'll take, I'll take that on. Advisement for sure. <laughs> yeah, the Comcast way. Great, but but otherwise, yeah, proceed exploring okay. that. Why not? It sure, if money. it saves us some money. <coughs> sure. Um, the Memorial Day parade went smooth. Covered bridges half marathon went smooth. We didn't have any issues during prom. The alumni parade, everybody is probably aware, <coughs> is this weekend. Hopefully that'll go smooth. I hope the weather holds out. <coughs> Graduation is also on Friday. Uh, so we'll have some extra DUI patrols out this weekend on uh, Fridays and Saturdays. Um, like I, we talked about, I moved the speed car to River Street. Officer LeBlanc participated in presenting the medals at the Special Olympics Summer Games in, in Burlington. We also um, participated in the Governor's Highway Safety Click It or Ticket uh, from May 20th to June 6th. We did 23 hours of extra patrols. That's covered by highway safety funds. Um, we participated in a Woodstock Elementary School program where students earn reward points and they can uh, purchase or with those reward points they can get certain prizes. One of the prizes and we happen to be probably the most expensive prize was a ride along in a police car. So I think we did half a dozen of those <laughs> a couple of weeks ago. We, we were pretty we, You know, we offer that for free in my store. Yeah, for anyone who like shoplifts. <laughs> 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 That's right. It was cool to see Officer LeBlanc running down the, up, uh, yeah. down the road with the torch. That's right, yeah, and she, she, did, that. Awesome. she did the torch run. Yeah. 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 yeah, she was running with, uh, I guess it was a student or something like that, and they had the the lit torch running down the side, they're running down Route 4. Yep. Wow. Yeah, so, uh, and then the last thing that we're doing this summer is we're participating in a program called uh, Creamy from a Cop. So the officers will be handing out these free creamy coupons to kids over the summer if they do something good or they see some kids being good. 
We'll hand these out and they're good for a free creamy at the uh, White Cottage and the Worthy Kitchen. Oh, is, is there an age limit? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> you should pass the job just by a couple of years. Are you good at the sweet and salty? No, yes. only the, well, I don't That's know if they'll have. take it or not because they're part of the Worthy Kitchen, but I just yeah. know that on the website they list the Worthy Kitchen and the Yeah, I'm uh, sure, because they don't have creamies cottage. at the so no, probably no, that's probably yeah. sauce. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good to know. <laughs> uh, that's my report. Great question. Sure. Uh, how are, how are you doing on the pursuit of a full time officer? That that's in process. Yeah, it is. Um, I've advertised. Obviously, I advertised on the Criminal Justice Training Council or the AKA Police Academy website. There's a employment section. Um, I've advertised. Obviously, I put it out on Facebook and announced it. I haven't advertised in the papers yet because I was hoping to get some leads from them before I went that step, um, but I haven't received any. I've also, um, I've put it out, the, you know, the word to the officers, hey, uh, if you know somebody, you know. Have you stood outside of Norwich Police Department? <laughs> yeah, I've, I've <laughs> <laughs> and speaking with uh, some other chiefs there, there's other agencies that are offering signing bonuses and it's, so we're just competing where that's the environment we have the creamies we have the creamies, we, we have the creamies <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they're usually older than that my good looks and charm um, <laughs> that. yeah yes yeah. so but you you have enough people to be covering yeah we're shirts. covered and we're back filled we did some adjustment with the schedule so um officer LeBlanc stepped up to the plate she's covering a couple extra midnight shifts to it and she adjusted her schedule to do that and we um, are backfilling. We had two basically with the with the readjustment of the schedule. We backfilled with two two spots, two two shifts for the village, and then we're we're backfilling with the, for town shifts with part timers. I will I will note that I, I am seeing since the springtime better weather uh, a more foot patrolling, um, and I, we appreciate that. Sure. That's great. You're, you're, yeah, you're doing it, but no, your your folks are doing it too. Yeah. Officer Donka is doing it quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's well that's, that's a good too. thing. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I I hope this is not an in, inappropriate time to bring this up, but uh, I wanted to give the board a little bit of a brief on what's going on with the revitalization, mm -hmm. and it involves the chief, and before he leaves. Maybe you have an opportunity to. Uh, I'm here to the end, so whenever you want to oh, okay. address it. So, whenever it's appropriate. I just didn't want him to leave without um, connecting with him about our progress because it's going to involve safety issues with bump outs and uh, what we talked about earlier. Right, so, let's get to that under other business. Good. Okay. Okay. All right. So, moving along, we have the uh, manager's uh, uh, financial report which I hope everyone's had a chance to look over. Um, to me, what stands out is uh, that if we receive the, at least a substantial amount of the revenue that's uncollected balances on here from highway revenue and police revenue, there should be some more coming in there, uh, we will be in decent shape in terms of uh, our budget. Um, I, have no, I have no other questions. I wonder if anyone else does. No. Okay. I thought it looked like we already Okay. So let's move on from that. Uh, the Vermont Adoptive signage for the Century Ride in the Village. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. He has the dog. Yeah. It's okay. okay. I'm sorry. Thank you. No, everything is good. Thank you for being here. Is there anyone? There's nobody here. He's here. He is here. Oh, here he is. He's coming up. There you are. Oh, great. Dad. You too. Okay. Dad. Joe. Okay. So. Yes, it was. He's going over. Yeah, it was correct. Did you make copies? Oh, yeah. Yep, they all have a copy. Oh, good. And they also have a copy of the email with the address and links and stuff on it. Yeah, we have a map. We have a map showing the route that you. Uh, yeah, yeah. The map is um, the map is is accurate. The 
the description, the GPS coordinates, those are accurate. He, Tommy refers to Elm Street as Park Street, I believe, so ignore Park, or, or, yeah, ignore Park. But for the most part, um, this is our ninth annual, and it's grown pretty substantially. And uh, we're up to about 600 riders. Not all of those come through Woodstock, only about half of them come through Woodstock. The 100 mile loop comes through Woodstock from uh, Barnard, and the 60 mile route comes through Woodstock from Bridgewater. The 100 milers leave at 7 a.m. They're through here, the fast ones are through here by nine. The fast 60 milers leaving at 10, they're through here, excuse me, leaving at nine Bridgewater, they're through here by 10. Most of the riders are through here by 10. 11 at the latest. We have SAG vans, for, uh, the, we're following the last rider, and we're pulling these signs as the last rider goes. Mm -hmm. So they're gonna be there Friday night, and then Saturday until the middle of the morning. There's eight of them. Um, the map shows an extra one. I don't have a description of that. I think that's a mistake, the one at Mechanic and Court Street. I don't think, I don't have a description of that one, but basically there's four coming in from Route 12. Yeah, go ahead. That one is a, um, you've gone too far. You okay. Right. Thanks. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you very much. Um, the, um, uh, September, isn't it? When does this take place? The, the what? When does this take place? Oh, I'm sorry. June 22nd and uh, 22nd. So, so next 20, weekend? Um, no. Well, two weekends. Two weekends. Father's oh, Day is next weekend. week. Right, okay. Yeah. Basically, we, um, our committee wrote a letter on May 3rd to the town, and I don't think our committee fully understands the special role that you guys play in the special relationship that you have with the village. Um, <coughs> And I, in preparing for this meeting, I was reading uh, minutes of the town uh, uh, select, 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 men, select board on May 21st, and I see that we appeared on uh, June 22nd, 2019, and Ms. Riley uh, approved the application. I believe she's referring to this letter as an application, but then asked us to contact the village police, and I'm glad you're here. I was hoping you would be here. And then if not, I would, you know, go over there. Yes? I can clarify. It's actually there was a permit submitted for Vermont, uh, the Vermont Adaptive Ride because okay. you'd go through the town. Yeah. So they approved your route okay. for the town. Okay, great. Right. Well, I wasn't sure. Uh, I, I'm the office manager. I sit in the office. We're statewide. I basically run two aid stations in Pittsfield and Plymouth, so I stay on that side of the course. I know what stock, of course. Our daughter went to school here. Um, we've, we've read our signage, uh, general rules and limitations in the Woodstock uh, Village zoning regs. Um, you know, we've seen the Covered Bridges Half Marathon, the Turkey Trot, the 5K, we've seen all the Green Mile, we've seen all the signage, and we're trying to do what, what they're doing and, and keep it, uh, you know, nicely done. These are mostly on H wires, and, uh, you know, they're kind of stomped in the ground. They stand up about this high. And um, so... And the riders are familiar with the signage in advance. Yes, for the most of them. I mean, the hundred mile riders are very serious riders, you know. So we have a link on our on our race site to courses, and they're intimately familiar. Ninety percent of them are intimately familiar with the with the course. So so they know how to come down and do the chicane around the village green. Right. The sixty milers have a lot easier time of it. Really, they just have to make a right when they get to the green, when they get to the Woodstock Inn. Um, the um, you know the the other riders they don't come they don't come near here. But there, you know three hundred riders. I'm going to say ninety percent of them know exactly where they're going. This is just for people who may be new or who may be trying something, stepping up from a twenty mile to a sixty or a sixty to a hundred. So but, about, about what time do the slowest ones, the last ones, come through? Well, we have a lot of, um, 
we, we have some, this Vermont Adaptive, so we are right. inclusive. We have blind riders on tandems. We have, uh, we have sit, sit uh, bikes. We have, um, uh, we've had some guys come in like, you know, almost at dark at Bridgewater on, we had a guy, he was a vet. He came in on a 60 mile, it took him 12 hours. But he was, you know, that was unusual. He hasn't, he hasn't come back. We hope he comes back, but usually we're all gathered there. The, the, the thing is, is gathered, uh, geared to gathering everybody at the brewery at 2 o'clock for a, a lunch. Lunch starts at, at noon, but get everybody fed by 2. Then there's um, a band and et cetera, et cetera. And then everybody leaves by 5, 6 o'clock. So we try and get the riders through by uh, 1 o'clock, everybody. Yeah. Where do people tend to leave their cars when they are? Oh, we're all we're all based at um, at the brewery. Um, so they go from the brewery back to the brewery. Yeah, yeah. We, we okay. all all the routes start at the brewery, and we've taken. We used to park on their leach field. That doesn't work very well. <laughs> um, we we now have have leased a, a farm on the other side of Bridgewater Corner Store. Very cool. And so we've. We've, uh, we're hoping, we had a very wet uh, year one year, and that, that poor field uh, turned uh, quite muddy, but you know, we reseeded it and hayed it and helped them. And, um, but basically, the, um, we have um, shuttles, you know, that's our, our parking has gotten quite extensive, so we have shuttles and they drive people to, the, to, their, uh, to their cars. You know, the Bridgewater Park, excuse me, the, the, the Long Trail parking lot, in Bridgewater is, is, you know, I don't know how many cars they can fit there, probably it's a lot. 200, 300, right. not, not a heck of a lot, because we take over the big field. Right. And bigger vehicles. Yeah, so we, you know, we, parking's a huge issue. Well, I've, I've worked with Ver, the Vermont Adaptive before on Vermont 50, and they're very well organized, and yeah. they are right. very so good at, you know, sorry. keeping volunteers and all places organized. So I'm not worried about this at all. And they're planning to pull them quickly, so that yeah. looks good to me. To Chief, do you see any problems with? No, like you said, we've never had any issues at, yeah. at Such that time. Event. I think it's all about right how, how, how meekly inclusive it is. Probably very similar to the harpoon point to point. It's, yeah, it's the they, all the riders know they have to obey the rules of the road on the, yeah. on the course. We have this registration on Friday night up at Killington, and um, we go through you know the whole routine. And, and most people come in on Friday night for a uh, you know, registration and a, a bit of a party, and then also you know get your get get ready to go because 7 a.m. you know comes up pretty quick on Saturday and. Um, uh, so yeah, we we do we have a very good website. If it's I th if if it's not referenced there, you just do Vermont Adaptive Charity Ride. It'll pop up, mm -hmm. and um, you know you'll see all the information. It's pretty extensive. Great. Well, I move to approve the track. We we don't even need. We don't to. need, oh, we don't need we to don't do that. Need to. They're just they're just <laughs> describing it and letting us know to see if we have any questions. I guess the town did that. We just wanted to come in yeah. on the signage. Make sure that the police uh, were aware of right. where they're going to be, so that there's no problems with, um, you know. Thank you for being so diligent. It's nice to keep us We appreciate it. Yeah, we, yeah, we have a very good, uh, our webmaster uh, went to uh, art school, and he's super talented, all these mm -hmm. logos. He's just, we're very fortunate to have somebody who's uh, not only good with the digital, but also an artist. It makes a big difference uh, as soon as you look at the... Sweet event. Have Thank weather. Yeah, well, we, we, we're batting about 500 on that. We, we do very well. And I really appreciate listening to your um, speeding talk, by the way. We have a very similar situation in Killington, River Road, where I live. I, you know, every town has a river road. It's the ancient, it's the old road. And, you know, times change and cars get faster, um, speed limits usually don't adjust much. There's a real problem in our town as well. So I, I understand, you know, the, the, the difficulty you're facing and I wish you well. I was taking notes because I'll be down to select board meeting and trying to share, you know, what I've heard tonight with them and, you know, good, good luck solving it. It's a tough one. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Good Thank Thank you. Thanks. Okay, we have uh, 
Green Mountain Power, our quest to update power lines and put in new poles. And uh, did we do old business? Are they? No, no, we, no. We have to go back to. We just did Vermont Adaptive, so right. No, so it's 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 if I miss something, it's <laughs> close. No, no, no we'll, we'll go back to it. We're doing new, new before. It's cool. Are they? Are they taking the old pole? Um. No. So here's no. where the select board has a problem. Yeah. Um, is and the select board passed this on because it is a trustees issue. But they, the problem they had with it is, um, there's still old poles from the last time this was done, and Green Mountain Power puts it on the companies that lease the poles, so the electric, the Comcast, Vtel, Fairpoint, Consolidated. Can we just require that they take the old pole? No. No. It's not there. No. Here's I mean, the, the pole that's up there now is, if they don't take it, it'll just fall over. <laughs> Right. Well, they're replacing. They want. They're proposing replacing quite a few of the poles going up. So Spain what are they going to do with them? They're just going to place. They're going to place new poles. So where are they removed? Next to the old poles. Okay. The problem is getting the old poles to come down. But the the see the phone company. So this is this is the power company. The phone company needs to get their lines up on the new pole, and then that's that's the hard part is getting them to do that in a timely mm -hmm. manner. Um, so I've talked to Phil about this. He's had success the last couple of times this issue has arisen by hounding the, the public utilities, uh, the State Department, to get after the, you know, the AT&Ts mm -hmm. or anyone else who's on the old poles to get them up on the new poles. Mm -hmm. Getting the old poles removed is happens pretty quickly after that. The slow part is getting them to move their lines onto the new poles. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> there's one, I, I understand one person in particular, they're having some power problems on Swain Street, having power issues because of lines being old and they lose power uh, more often than elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Phil said we might as well go ahead and do it because in his opinion, uh, you know, he'll get them moved eventually, but we have to get those new poles in before any action can be taken to get the old lines put up on the new, and then the poles removed, the old poles removed. Nothing will happen if we don't give the permit, but um, I don't know is that we want to do that. Are the old poles good burnable hardwood? No. <laughs> no. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. No, they're, they're it not. Wasn't good hardwood. Now, they're, they're the one, thing, the one thing I see problem. in here that concerns me that uh, there is wording in one place under authorization where they, uh, uh, the cutting and trimming of trees within the highway right of way is necessary for the construction, operation, and maintenance of the lines. However, on the map, it does show where that would not be allowed mm -hmm. for the first section of Swain Street. <coughs> And I, w I just would want to make sure that wording is carried, if we decide to approve this permit, is carried into the part we're signing. Um, that no cutting or trimming of trees on that first section of Swain Street be allowed. And why is that? Well, because there are nice trees there, and uh, they don't have to come down. Sometimes well, they're saying trimming, not come, not take down. Well, I don't think they're using an artist. Cutting and trimming. Uh, you know, I, I think they don't necessarily do the best job um, so if there's objection and the objections come from the people living on St. Swain Street that's why that's on there um, so on the map you'll see it says no trimming allowed on this section and I just would want to see that carried over mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. the uh, permit yeah, how, many poles so are, how many poles are they going to be removed? it's a number of poles yeah. yeah, I was just checking out. Check it, check it out okay. in the picture. It says one, two. Is it, are they adding? Are adding two and replacing two? They're it's like one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, about five. Two, Maybe six. Two, no, five. There's five. a lot of this thing that says no trimming. Well, we want the, the uh, permit to include what it says on the map. That's all I'm saying. And who does the hounding of the other utilities? That would be our town manager. 
Well, no, oh, he oh. hounds Green Mountain he Power, bounds. who does the hounding, yes? No. Oh. No. No. State, the state hounds the other companies like Comcast and so forth. He hounds the state, the, the state, state hounds them, and that's when it gets done. So, what's your pleasure, folks? So you just, you would just like to see that it says, uh, where it says cutting, that within the... Only, only, only where shown appropriate on the maps that were did given a, to us. Did a representative of GMP come to the select board? No. He was no. rather That's mean. All right. <laughs> He was rather mean <laughs> when they didn't approve it. But he said he wasn't there. He called. Is this Caleb? Well, the point is, this is an upgrade. Yeah. In the long run, it's a headache until the old poles are removed. Um, people on the street want it, and it's not pretty visible to anywhere else in the village except on Swain Street. It you know, comes off Linden Hill, for those who don't know. Where Swain Street is. Well, it goes up. Out my window. It's that really, really pitched well, street. Yeah. It's such a pretty street. It's that really pitched road. No, oh. it goes up and then goes it through the woods. It climbs up through the, into the woods. It's a dead end. It goes up and then turns south and goes into and ends up as a dead end. Oh, well, I would remember the word. It comes back down on Church Road. Yeah. Well, not, uh, it's like it's not. It's like a class no. four. No, that's road. yeah. It's not. It's not no, Swain it's Street. Not a, that's not, not Swain Street. Street. Oh, that's not Swain Street. No, but it connects to the road up at the top and comes down. Comes down. down yeah. Onto uh, Church Hill. Yeah. Up there. So yeah. what were you going to say? I was going to say I would remove the term cutting, and then after trimming of trees, I would say, with the exception of the area designated on the map, that you're not allowed to cut trees or trim trees. Well. Trimming might have to be allowed, correct? Well, but the exception... It's cutting that, that yeah. you don't like that word. I don't like the word cutting, and uh, trimming is allowed where shown where on the map. That, yeah, that's what I would if we change. So what if they can't do their work safely when there is no trimming? They already know that they can do their work. I mean, this was their, this is what they submitted. This yeah. Is, yeah. This is, they already okay. know they can do the work. Okay. Okay, that's fine. I, I, I mean, I'm... New to this, you obviously know about it. Well, they, yeah, no it's on their map. Right, that's fine. I don't know who wrote that in there, is what I'm saying. They're aware that that's on there. Okay, so I second Serena's. Any other discussion? That was an emotion. That was an emotion, that but was I, thought you said was I was just making a comment. All right. that is I there a motion? I would make a motion to approve this permit with the changes of removing the word cutting and specifying that they can only trim trees within the area designated on the map. Okay. Trimble. Oh, Trimble, yes, <laughs> the Trimble. I'll second that, that motion. Sense. Yes. I would also add that it, it, we hound the other yeah. utilities because poles that are, will be left standing are really unsightly. I mean, there's not room well, for two. Our, our, yes, well, that's our, our town manager will be doing that. But you can't. Can't put any wording in that. No, no, but that doesn't, that doesn't yield the permit. That's Green Mountain has no control over that. Green Mountain Power has no control over that. I'm just the putting it in the Green Mountain Leases record. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, you got that in the record? So, oh, sorry. You got. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you want All to. the record. <laughs> you want to include that. Um, There's no that'll cutting. Be, that'll no, be diligent. No. I got no cutting and no trimming, but uh, you want to include diligence in removing um, the, old the old poles. And they can trim well in the allowed area. In the allowed yeah, area. yeah, I got that part. <coughs> I could hear you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Permit is granted with the conditions that were included. Discussed. Dis <laughs> okay, grant and aid program. This is to our benefit. The Two Rivers uh, 
Invitation yeah. to participate in municipal roads grant and aid program. They pay 80% of these improvements. Um, and uh, we just, uh, to, to uh, participate, um, we've got to uh, sign a letter of intent. Um, I recommend that we do, because it's to the benefit of our roads. Which roads would these this affect? It's it's an uh, you know if you if you read through this it doesn't say exactly, exactly which ones right. but we have to apply. Yes. They have a certain amount of funding. We apply for roads that meet the standards that are mm -hmm. detailed here, mm -hmm. and uh, so it's up to us. It's ro roads that have water that, that can shed into uh, waterways. Do you right. need a, mo a motion? Yes, please. So moved. Is there a I'll second? Second. second. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor of us signing this letter of intent to participate in the Municipal Roads Grants and Aid Program? Say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Now, let's go back to old business and uh, first of all talk about what you want to talk about, John. Yeah. Is it appropriate? Is it a good time for it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we did. The committee just thought it might be good if we gave you uh, the board an update on what's how things are progressing with revitalization. Sure. Since uh, I think a lot has happened since the last time we spoke. Yeah. Um, first of all, the benches uh, are in and are being assembled as we speak. Uh, we should get delivery either at the end of this week or the first part of next week, and then the three of us will distribute them at the. Uh, at the appropriate places that we discussed earlier. How many are there? Uh, 14. And then the teak ones? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so um, the, the uh, bump outs, uh, Ray and I walked this morning at all the locations, and uh, based on the chief's recommendations, um, identified what would be where, we have two sizes, smaller and bigger ones, what would be where um, and how many there would be. Um, I'm sorry we didn't talk to you sooner, but it was requested that uh, two more locations be added to the ones that we walked to, the one going from Bob Bank over to Lincoln Street, yep. and then one at the uh, point of Tribal Park. Yeah, I actually went out there and looked at those yeah. because they had Good. asked me to, to look at them. And I suggested that <clears throat> on the eastbound book yeah. is okay, yeah. but there's no place for them on, on the westbound. Not, right we didn't think about we, what we thought, but one big one right at the point, and then identify how, uh, how to handle going eastbound on one and then westbound on the other. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, what about the uh, crosswalk at Zach's place? That's the one that's, I'm talking that's about. The way. Bar that's the Oh, okay, Bar Harbor on the other side, yeah. That's All right? Yeah. So, uh, Ray's going to go down to Boston and order them on Friday. I don't know how, how, how long you think it'll take Ray to get them up here. Don't know. Don't know. Yeah. So we think we by know. July yeah. first. Yeah, we, we think we can get it out there by July 1st or, or soon thereafter. Get them in the out. It's going to be a lot of work, but uh, the biggest part of it is going to be filling and putting the plants in. And then uh, I'd like the, the chief, that's why I asked you to stay, um, maybe make some time uh, after we get a pot that you kind of walk around with us and... You uh, like, want to know what kind of flowers? Yeah, you know, you can bring your bucket of holy water. <laughs> <laughs> so you can bless everything. Yeah. All right. Whatever you need. All right, great. Yeah, no, no, and if the chief's officers could carry uh, the water in backpacks. Oh, so they do. Do. I have a nice watering can with the little plastic flower on the side. Yeah, with the bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah. So then, um, then the next, the next obvious issue that we're going to address is going to be the trash cans. So we talked about that this morning. Uh, we're going to start uh, looking at some of the ones that have been recommended, get an idea of what they're going to cost, and where there might be appropriate location for them, and then uh, come back to you guys, you know, and get your approval. Contingent, of course, upon design review, and um, uh, we'll get that get that ball rolling. Yeah. Now, Tigo Park, Tigo Land. Can I say something about the trash Good. Um, did you co have you contacted anybody who uh, from other solid waste districts or Casella who does our trash pickup for any 
suggestions on how, you know, like signage for, because I know compost is kind of coming down the line um, in terms of municipalities needing to collect that at some point um, to some degree. So I wouldn't want you to make this huge investment and then have to reconfigure something you because it's required. Well, I know that, you know, one of the things that we ran up against is that, you know, the state came in with this new legislation that yeah. required a recycling bin right next to every single trash yeah. receptacle. And so Phil had to kind of finagle that situation. And that's kind of why we have the mishmash of, of receptacles that we do now. So I would just want you to have like the, be prepared for anything that's required of you in that way. Well, I, and I think every, every, every uh, recommendation will make every suggestion, every option. We'll present the we'll have trash recycle. We haven't talked about the, uh, the right. compost thing yet. And I don't know if we're going to have to put out a third one. Is that what you're thinking about? Well, that's what I'm afraid of. I think that there is some legislation that it has some timing that the, it's enforced on the state level. And obviously, you know, we kind of have to figure, you know, the way that that goes. Yeah, yeah um, you don't want garbage out the street on the sidewalks. I mean, you have to have covered trash can covers, not open container. Right, no, absolutely. I just wanna I just wanna you I guys think you to be sure a bunch of covered make right, sure. Right. So that you're not you're not making this huge investment and in some I mean, some I stuff. Think it's a good idea. That, it's something we should look at. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. Right. And they might require sure certain signage and all of that stuff. So yeah. I just good. I have another question. Does design review really have to be involved with the no. choice of our trash cans? Uh, Even though they're opinion? not a permanent structure, <laughs> you know, in my opinion. No, I'm being serious. Do they have? Do they have? I went already to design review. Uh, I, whether you went or not, uh, there's a there's definitely a precedence here of people making suggestions even when they don't have precedence over it. Yeah. Does design review have precedence over what the garbage cans look like? Well, they they have precedence. Well, they, they, they have they an don't. advisory board. They are strictly an advisory. Well, board. then why? Right, I understand that they're an advisory board, but they can tell you when I had to have my awning put the up. DRV? They thought that they could tell me yes or no to certain colors to font. They can tell you. Carrie, they can tell you yes or no to what they like or what they think of it. But I can still so do whatever I want. It doesn't mean anything. Put no, That's but it my goes point to the is DRV. that it goes to the Village Development Review Board. The last time Phil ordered new garbage cans, it did go through the Village Development Review Board. Which is different than design but, review. But yes, we, we take right. the advice right. of design review. So you get two Seriously. meetings. So you go to a design review meeting Seriously. and then you go to the development right, review. Right, but then board sometimes meeting. aren't we just it's drawing so things out too much to get too many people's opinions? which jumbles it up into it's like, we might as well just ask the whole community on what well, they think I, I about think the garbage if cans. If it's in the design review district, they did that. then, <laughs> yeah. then it goes before the design yeah. review. If it's in that, that district, mm -hmm. which yeah. is less than the it's size of the village, village, smaller than the village, the idea is that it runs through multiple groups so that uh, it's in keeping with the, we um, are not changing the village in a way that we later regret. Well, I, I think that importantly, it it keeps it um, consistent across all applications: signs, trash cans, houses. Everyone must go through the same process. Yes. And so we want to get into a dialogue about design review. We can because you know I was on the no, planning commission for Can ten I just years, say that and the we we issued all the permits at that time, and we had we had to consider the opinion of the design review on everything from. Uh, additions to a TV dish. Just remember, you know? this is what we're talking about, what we have now. Now, right. Oh, everybody's... In, we no, 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 no. Yeah, absolutely. We absolutely do. Absolutely we're going to do better than so that, I, I am sure. The select board approved the money to the EDC, because the select board has to, contingent upon approval by the design right. review board. No, no, no. They take their opinion. They don't have to... They, they can consider their opinion. They don't have to say yes or no they based don't on it. Anything. Right. That's so right. They it doesn't approve anything. They're going to make to I just to was wondering if they actually. <laughs> We're going to do what we need to do. I, I agree I with promise. you. I promise. So, anyway, that aside, yeah. Tegel's uh, Landing. Uh, we get a, uh, a plan or a budget from Jack Rossi. Uh, which includes just about everything we discussed uh, while we were down here. Um, converting 
the wooden steps to granite steps um, and enlarging them at the base rather than three feet wide go to five feet wide. Um, the, uh, a picnic table down there, um, pots, flowers, um, a, a tree, handrails is a big one. The, 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 biggest, the biggest expense is going to be uh, getting rid of the old wooden stairs that are there existing and installing the new ones and the handrails. Uh, because the handrails essentially going to have to be custom made. You know, every one is different. Uh, from what we need, from what another community might need. So they ha essentially have to be custom made. Um, and then there's going to be the, uh, the tree that's going to go in, there's going to be some perennials that go in. So the total budget is going to come to about $50,000. And, uh, but we have 10. Just for Teagles? I'm sorry? Just for Teagles. Yeah. Just for tables. And who's responsible if they get washed, like the pots, the expensive pots you guys are putting down there get washed out? Who's responsible? Yeah, well, first of all, they're not going to be expensive pots down there. There's no pots down there. And there's no pots well, you just mentioned there's going to be flower pots. No, perennials. Perennials, perennials on the bank. Oh. But not. not you did say pots, right? Thank you. Okay, I didn't hear that. I'm the sorry. one thing you That's left out was, uh, we've talked about grinding. The only place we're going to put pots is if, 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 as you descend the steps, that little level to the left? Well, if they wash away from there, we're all in trouble. I mean, you know, look for Noah someplace because it's, it's, it's going to be, you know, a bad deal. So I, w I wouldn't be too concerned about that. Okay. Um, <laughs> the, granite benches? Um, yes, it can be granite benches uh, down below. Two. Two, two, two granite benches, so they will not wash away. Well, the picnic benches didn't wash away during the last yeah. time. So. Right. so that's where we are. As far as the, um, we're going to impose upon the, um, the police department to probably rope off some stuff so that we can get, there's going to be a big machine down there digging things out and sure. moving things around a couple of days. But, you know, I'll give you plenty of those. Okay. Well, you know, it's, uh, it's a lovely project. Per square inch, it's the most used park in the oh, it is. <laughs> place yeah. per square inch. It's green. not very big, yeah. um, but um, it is used a lot. And uh, it will, w if everything is done that uh, the it committee is looking I at, it, it will be beautiful. It will be beautiful. And uh, I certainly hope uh, that the EDC and the select board We're not gonna sell for anything less than beautiful. follow yeah. through with supporting it. Oh, EDC? Yes, mm -hmm. I'm just yeah. saying I hope they, they follow through in supporting it. Uh, with the funds that they have available to them. Uh, I'm not really concerned about that, but yeah, there's always a concern. Joe, do you also yeah. know if there's plans to coordinate with the with the town to get those crosswalks repainted wherever these bump outs are going to be? We talked about that today. Because this I can't town. tell you enough of how many people I've almost seen get hit because cars don't even see because there are no crosswalks just anymore. Have to wait. There's nothing there. Really nice red, red, red makes them disappear. They need to be a much brighter color. I know I. I I don't I care what it looks like. It needs to be it, To ask if he had a, a timeline. Um, he didn't have a timeline. He was going to follow up with the company, though, that is, that is going to do the, the site, the crosswalk markings mm -hmm. for the town. I forget the name of the company, but um, he tells me that you know, every time it rains, it puts them behind from whatever projects they're on, and so we get... But we are that's the time. We just got some paint and did it. But I think it's... Oh. Uh, but we are on the queue for the for getting those. I agree. It's so dangerous. Um, with the repaving, is it possible to put something in that's a little bit more permanent, like pavers, like red pavers, to make to delineate I the crosswalks? I think crosswalks? we wanted to get is away from something? the red because when they put the red in on the pavement, and it just were in effect. What seems to be most Can't effective is the the white ladder <laughs> crosswalk. Mm -hmm. And they put. I just wonder if it kind of looks. I've seen it done in other towns where it's 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 permanent. It's pavers that look like. Not when John has to go be, through though. That would be up to you folks. I mean, but I don't. The problem know. is in yeah. all exactly. the time the piles will just rip them off and replace them all. And the trucks will destroy them. Yeah, they'll, they'll bounce them right out of the ground. Yeah. I oh, do believe we also have to remove one, one get that on the street and have to remove it because it's a state road, road. <laughs> still a state road. I 
I think you had to do that. Yeah. It was across from the terrace. Yes, they did that. They had papers no. there. And it had to be removed, yeah. and they had, it was a big mm. thing. It was kind of a, a weird bump. A little it was round. Like a little raised. Yeah. 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 I remember that. It yeah. had to be removed because it's technically still a state road, even though it's in the village. Mm. Okay. So that's where we are today. Uh, if you have any questions, please fire away, and uh, we'll try to answer them as best we can. I'll, I'll have to say one thing. I really feel great working about working with these two guys. There. Yeah, I mean, they're fabulous. They do nothing would get done without these guys. Really. It's great. Yeah. Good job. I mean, I've always said you can do anything if you got good help. I've got good help. <laughs> that's great. Mom Bear should give you free coffee, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, at least a couple. Thank you. Months. Thank you, Joe. Maybe, maybe. All right, moving along. Um, <laughs> Old business, um, I just want to bring one thing up uh, I don't have the answer to, but I know that at our last meeting, I think we talked about the highway department uh, fixing the grate in front of TD Bank mm -hmm. Still uh, as soon as it is warm enough. How warm does it need to be <laughs> is going to be my question. That is part of a bid package that just went out uh, for the sidewalk repairs on Elm Street. Because I can't tell you how many people I see no, I know, uh, but, on Elm Street. But that's are, part of a bid package that just, so just went out. It just went out. So so we were previously informed that our highway department was going to do I, that I particular grade. Could, could you put an orange cone on it? I can look into that. Could you? Yeah. Thank you. I mean, it look gross, but... Um, it, because, yeah, maybe... It's horrendous. Speak to Phil, find out what went where that's at um, because that was meant to be done as soon as it was warm enough um, and it's it's bad thank you Ray uh, appreciate that um, okay any other minutes do you mind if I do any, any business? other business What's um, I was wondering has there any been any positive um, response to the street sweeper being moved in hours or any negative responses to the street sweeper being moved in hours I have not heard anything one way or the other. I, I nothing bad. I think right or something. To what they moved? There will be options at the next uh, select board meeting. What's that? There will be options at the next select board meeting. Oh, I thought the hours were already moved. Temporarily. 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 Uh, that's what I was wondering. Has anybody called into town and said that <coughs> we haven't had any noise complaints? If that's what you're talking about. They're they're knowing their tenants or or. Since, since the, ch the time adjustment, to my knowledge, we have not received any noise complaints. Perfect. Okay, so we've got, the only thing left to do at this point is uh, approval of minutes, um, and then we are going to have a, uh, an executive session to discuss personal matters. Yes, Beth. I thought, I, I, can I discuss this permit, although you're gonna vote on it the next meeting? permit request from Brandy Falling and Bohemia Productions for use of the sidewalk. Okay. Yeah, oh yes, go right okay. ahead. This is something new. Right, and I apologize. I received it in the mail, in the by email yesterday. But it's a production company who wants to do still photography and B-roll video for a Lane Bryant holiday spot. Um, one day within the window of July 15th to the 18th of next, mo next month. Um, and they would most likely, likely use um, Central Street and Elm Street. Um, and they'd like to pre-scout to determine where in fact it would be. But it's a national holiday commercial. And the certificate of insurance uh, for the naming the town was included. Do we get paid for that? I wish. <laughs> but you get it's publicity. Yeah, it's publicity. <laughs> uh, no, what I'm saying is that like when they use this, the city of Atlanta, Atlanta gets paid a ton of money yeah. for that to happen. No. Not we're not Atlanta. We're not get paid. So, so basically what you're saying is uh, we're going to put this off to actually grant the permit, but I would like to have a sense of the board if, if, it go, if it's as described, the permit, would we be uh, granting uh, permission for that, would, to do that? Yeah, I would. Okay. And do they say what time of day that they'll be for doing this? Uh, no. And do they need the street emptied? No. Okay, then I'm fine with it. 
So, so the sense of the board is that the permit, as you're presenting it, would be approved at our next meeting if it's not altered from what you described. Right. And I'll just give her the sense of the board. Okay. And Great. I, if you want me to ask the time of day, I'd be happy to. That's why I think less is more. Still photography. It can't be that. It's still an, an ND roll. Do a so. flash mob. Okay. I think it's fine. Yeah. Okay. It's nice. Um, all right. So moving along, uh, we're going to approve minutes, and then we're going to adjourn into executive session before we uh, review expense warrants. So um, the minutes. Um, so uh, just a couple of things I noticed. Uh, Beth, sorry, but uh, upset. no, you, you know, an A, maybe instead of A plus plus. A, no, A plus. Um, under the people present, uh, Jack, would that be Jack Rossi? My son. The last name? Sure. I have no clue. He just went by Jack, and I didn't get a last name, and he didn't say it. He just yeah, said that Jack. Was Jack. That was Jack, that Jack, was Jack was Rossi. Jack. Okay. Just to, no. add, just to add his last I'm name. And then under uh, <laughs> line 40, the Woodstock Alumni Parade, use of the green, wouldn't that be June 15th, the same day as the parade? Probably. Good eye. Like a hawk. <laughs> just, just noticed that. Um, so if we change that to June 15th, I think it would be accurate. Other than that, I didn't find anything else. Uh, I still think that's an A+. Plus. I do too, because it's not an A++. Plus plus. I make a motion to accept the um, minutes for the 4th and the 14th of May um, with the changes that were requested. Second. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Okay, and then uh, uh, so I'd like us to uh, adjourn for executive session. We can go to that other little room. Uh, what? We're going to go into the room. We're going to go into the room, room over there, um, and then we'll rejoin. We'll re rejoin back. He said he can leave. Uh, what? Are we leaving? He said, but yep. it doesn't matter. What?